Hello and welcome to my channel, Knitting Books Etc. My name is Cristina and I come to you from Lisbon, Portugal. Today is Palm Sunday, uh, which is, uh, let me see, the 10th of April of 2022. Okay, regarding knitting, this is my newest finished object, as we say in the knitting world. So, it's a... Uh, a design by a Japanese designer. Uh, her name, well, her brand is Knit Cafe Midori. I can't remember her name, but and it's um, a spring garment made uh, with um, linen and cotton yarn. So, regarding books, I have been having some trouble with my reading. Because yesterday I was trying to think, um, well, let me preface this by saying that uh, I saw an announcement video by Christy Lewis from Christy Lewis Dostoevsky in Space, where she was, um, oh, I forgot to bring my book here to show you anyway. She was announcing a read-along for May. <clears throat> of uh, the, the book by Boris Pasternak, Dr. Jivago, which uh, it's, it's a book I have got from, well, I have <coughs> the collection uh, vintage Russian classics. And so I've got that book and I even got um, the, <coughs> the audio book. And I am, I look forward to reading it. But after watching her video, I thought to myself that I'm a ridiculous reader. <coughs> and then I wrote a list of what I have in my hands right now. Um, first of all, I'm reading the Bible, which is all well and good because actually today is the 100th day of the year because I've been reading it with the help of a podcast called Bible in a Year which is published by Ascension Press and we have a plan uh, and every day uh, we read a bit of the Bible and according to the plan. And so today uh, it was the 100th episode, so the 100th reading. Uh, I'm enjoying it a lot because it really helps me uh, persist or persisting with that reading. Uh, so I'm learning lots of things. I had never read uh, I think I never read past um, Middle of Exodus or something like that. So, for example, I, I, I learned the other day that there was a second water parting. I only knew about the Red Sea. and uh, But now that I uh, read Joshua and uh, when they the tribes of Israel finally uh, came to their uh, place and then divided all that land. They crossed the River Jordan. And to do that, there was also a parting of the waters. Okay. And uh, lots of details. I'm learning things or stories that somehow I already knew, some I didn't. But now I am seeing everything in context, which is it's been amazing. So... Of course, this takes me between 20 to 30 minutes every day in the morning, but that's okay. So that's not my problem. But then I am also taking part of a read-along, which is a, a year-long read-along organized by Face from uh, Books and Face or Face and Books. I never know the name of the channels. And uh, we are reading The City of God which is a very big book. 
I have it in um, a ebook here, which is very good because, um, well, I wanted to show you the cover, but I'm going to show you here. It's this uh, 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 cover here. Can you see? Okay. And next to it is Shogun, which I already will talk about it in a minute. So, it's a huge book, but because we are reading it uh, throughout the year, I normally read it 10, 10 minutes a day, and it's enough to be on target with our plan. And I am in just, this book has, it's like this, uh, Augustine is a teacher and he is very systematic in what he's teaching us. Uh, until now, he's been, he has been um, trying to explain how ridiculous the religion of all those gods in Rome is. And um, so, but he's very sorrow. So at, there are moments where we cannot, or I cannot stand reading more about all those gods and uh, what. But I understand that he, he needs to be complete in his, comprehensive in his explanations. But now we are starting book seven and it's quite fun because it's, I feel like I am doing a re reboot or a revision of my uh, secondary school because here I didn't know, I actually don't know what or how the country's uh, school works. But here in Portugal, uh, we have in the 10th, 11th and 12th grade from in my case, not all courses. Some courses or only it's only in tenth and eleventh grade. Anyhow, in tenth and eleventh grade, it's a compulsory subject: philosophy. Uh, every student in high uh, in secondary school, tenth and eleventh grade, has to um, have this subject in their curriculum. And then, in my case, because I went. to to uh, my area of studies was in what we call uh, arts and letters, so literature and so on. I also had had the subject in the 12th grade. So it's we studied the history of philosophy and all those pre-Socratic philosophers and then Socrates and so on. And uh, until the more modern ones, like I remember uh, reading Kierkegaard and um, Schopenhauer and so on. Of course, that was when I was 15, 16 and 17. Then I, I, had, I never uh, picked them up, but now uh, Augustine is telling us, uh, it's revising this subject for me because He's, he first uh, mentioned um, pre-Socratic schools, like uh, what he called the Italian and the Ionian school, <clears throat> with Pythagoras in the Italian school and Thales of Mileto in the uh, Ionian school. And I remember reading uh, uh, and studying those. So, and then all those uh, pre-Socratic philosophers, which we whose name started with A, Anaxagoras and and something and another, and other. but um, very, very interesting to recall all those um, philosophers. But so, this all to say that, oh, sorry, so this takes me 10 minutes in the morning. After I read the Bible, I pick up the City of God and I read it a bit. On weekends, I, instead of reading The City of God, I read um, my, where is it? I have it here, okay. I'm continuing reading Paradiso. Uh, and I am currently on Canto 16. So today I'm going to read Canto 16. I haven't read it yet. And the, my, and so yesterday I read uh, Canto 15. And 
my process of reading Paradiso, it's a little bit involved. And it's becoming uh, more and more involved, actually. Because uh, when I read Inferno and uh, Purgatory, I only read from this book. This book, I, I like this version. It's the only version I know in English. Because, why did I buy it? First of all, because it was easily available in a bookstore near me. Second, because uh, I liked what I read, translation, and I liked the fact that it's it has the Italian in one side and um, the English version in the second side. Then it has, for each canto, it has an introductory uh, page, which tell us, explains more or less what's happening. And then um, the, um, uh, the canto itself it has lots of footnotes, which are very good because sometimes there are references that... Uh, to the history and uh, of um, Florence and uh, to characters that appear here which are historical figures and I, I have no idea who they are but the book in a very they are very succinct notes they tell us what we are talking about and uh, I love that so it's very it was a very easy read actually but then I started as always complicating things and so I found an in I'm a subscriber of Audible and I found an audiobook with the whole Divine Comedy read in Italian. It's actually uh, the whole Divine Comedy read and then uh, that that takes one third of the of the audio and then two thirds are commentary. I actually know I don't remember now the name of the person reading and commenting, but I know that Tom from Tom L.A. Books hates the man. Uh, well, he's already deceased, but I remember reading something by Tom, a uh, comment, and he said that he really despises this guy. But it, it was easily available, and so you read. So how I do it now is I, started by, I start by reading, listening, uh, and reading the Italian part. Of course, the great majority I don't understand, but some of it I do. Then I found this book at my mom's house. Uh, actually, it's not one, it's three volumes. I have the other two over there. Three volumes of Divine Comedy, and this is Paradiso. And this version is in Portuguese, and it is translated by a Portuguese writer, which is called, or was, because I think she is dead already. Oh, actually, hmm. I now notice that the books are not all, so these uh, volumes are not all translated by the same person, because I had read... Um, that uh, a writer called Fernanda Butelho had translated uh, this book. But this book. Uh, but now I see here another one, Hermindo Rodrigues. So it seems that uh, each volume was translated by a different person. There's now a Portuguese translation which is quite uh, well known by a, also another Portuguese writer, and I want to. Uh, to get that translation uh, because they, it is perhaps um, considered a better one. But now I'm reading this but also. But what happens is that this is a very beautiful book. It has the Gustave Doré's uh, uh, illustrations. So, for example, for the Canto 16, uh, here you have it, an illustration, and then uh, the the cantos are uh, all very well. The type is very good. the The three lines are separated, so it's very easy to read. But the text itself is more difficult for me than the Italian, which is not even a modern Italian. So. 
but still I persist. And finally, I pick up this version. So, but it's in, in the end, I watch Tom's video. So it is kind of a lengthy process, but um, I'm enjoying it every bit. So, and this is my first reading of Paradiso. So I, I am already thinking of when I finished, I will restart Inferno with perhaps another um, translation, but I will keep this book with me first because it has the Italian part and then because of the notes. I don't know about the other translations. Uh, what I uh, write, uh, like in this one is that uh, it's very short footnotes. We don't have to go back and forth like in some books where you have the end notes. So this is what I do on the weekends when, I, um, when I'm not um, reading City of God. But then, as you know, I decided to read also a Don Quixote in Spanish, or Castilian to be more precise. And this is a very long book. It is very, very enjoyable. I had no idea. Again, one of those books that I already said, oh, I have to reread this. Because, especially because of the way I'm doing it now, with this ridiculous thing that I am explaining to you. So, uh, there's a, a, a group read. Um, I think that uh, the hosts are Alan from... Uh, big books or hard books and the classics. I, I never know the names of the channels. I'm sorry, but I will link them down below. Below and uh, Ross from Skeleton Link about the books. And so we are. I initially had the idea of uh, reading slowly, uh, but then I got um, actually very a little bit influenced by all the other readers of the group that are reading uh, at a faster pace. And so um, I am a bit behind, uh, but I'm getting there. This book, I also have uh, a version of the audiobook in Castilian. And it's so funny uh, because of the way the language works. I love reading in the original. Some of the words I don't understand, but I do have an English translation, and if I want, I, I also have access to a Portuguese translation, but I am enjoying it immensely. I am now at the beginning of the second part, so uh, Cervantes wrote this um, in two parts. He wrote um, the first part, and then ten years later, he decided to, uh, to, read, uh, to write... Um, a second part, uh, especially because I think that uh, other people, this became so popular that other people decided to uh, write a second part, and so he decided, no, no, I am the author, I'm going to write it. He also addresses this in the beginning of the second part, which is, I found it very interesting because he talks about the writing process, he talks about uh, the critics, he talks about lots of things related to that. Also, the characters of Don Quixote and Sancho Panza and all the other characters are absolutely hilarious all the, and serious at the same time. Uh, it's funny because... Um, this is a book, uh, uh, the other day I was reading and I was thinking that that's right. This is a book where uh, Cervantes makes fun of these ideals of knight errants and so on. But at the same time, he also uh, seems to, to defend those ideals, think that they are not bad at all. So it's a... A mixture of the of the two and uh, great characters lots of stories quite entertaining for the uh, episodes also but the characters themselves are very very interesting 
I have just read, um, I think it was chapter 5 of, the, of part 2, where the narrator says, well, some people say that this is apocryphal because um, these uh, parts are apoc uh, apocrypha because uh, Sancho Panza, who should be an ignorant, uh, shows lots of wisdom and so on. So some people don't believe that these are, um, this is really uh, um, part of the narration of the rest of the book. So it's very funny. Uh, even those interjections of the narrator, uh, the dialogue between uh, the characters. Don Quixote, from, in my opinion, is actually not mad at all. Um, he says so many things that are, and Sancho Panza too, so many things that are so wise. I'm enjoying this, but... But if I had stopped here, that wouldn't be a problem. But I also uh, uh, wanted to read, uh, reread actually, a book uh, that, and then when I saw Greg from another bibliophile reads announce a read along of The Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann, I jumped immediately. I want to read that too. The problem is that that book. At present, I only have it in audio form. And uh, it is a more recent translation. I don't know, or sorry, when it, what's the date of that translation, but uh, I know that the great, there's also a Voxer group, and the great majority of, uh, and funnily enough, many people that are reading uh, Don Quixote are also participating in Thomas Mann. Um, the Magic Mountain reading along. So there are other crazy people, not only me. The problem is that I didn't stop here, as I can tell you in a minute. So um, my... Where is it? My book, uh, uh, it is The Magic Mountain. So I have it here. Oh, I want it to... Let me see. On the same floor as the mm -hmm. So here this audiobook and uh, to make it I want to get the the, the book there is no ebook so I have to find of uh, this version of this translation uh, so I'm going to get the physical book uh, which I have already found an edition which I like uh, and uh, I think it's everyman uh, books so uh, and but for now I'm only listening to it and it's been absolutely a pleasure to to listen what I'm doing it also it was also a pretext for me to start walking again because I interrupted my walking and that I used to do almost almost no every day and um, I used to love walking while listening to an audiobook or a podcast. But now I am. I decided to restart. That's what I called the catch fit with Thomas Mann. So uh, I am doing that. And uh, the problem is that the book is so well, so interesting. Uh, and something that I, I like uh, when authors start... I don't know, uh, go on tangents about some certain subjects. So, and many people complain that this book has no plot. Okay, there are people who are in a sanatorium because they are sick with tuberculosis. And that's there. And we see their lives there. And apparently, they live in a kind of a stasis I think that nothing happens it's uh, their daily routine which is always precise and so but of course there's lots of introspection of the narrator uh, of the of the main character uh, we see um, his mind and his thoughts we also um, there's lots of uh, again 
uh, reflections on time, space, relationship between the two. Uh, there are lots of interesting characters and I am enjoying this very much. So much so that uh, I, in the first week of April, which has just ended, I read or I listened to three weeks of our planned schedule for the reading. So, um, and I want to read everything, uh, but I have to pause a bit because otherwise I am too advanced in relation to the others in the group. But I am enjoying it a lot. Then there is the the mammoths from March, which I am almost everyone has finished the book Shogun by. James Covell about um, the adventures of a British uh, sailor captain of a ship in Japan in the 17th century, 16th century actually, or the beginning of the 17th, end of the 16th, beginning of the 17th century. And um, it is interesting. I already uh, vented a bit about uh, the book because I was reading it as historical fiction, which is uh, what the book is supposed to be. But as I said, there are certain historical facts that I studied uh, which don't match what's happening in the book. So then I started distrusting uh, the author regarding the other uh, facts which I haven't studied and so I don't know. It's like, I remember once uh, I read an article on a newspaper about, it was, a, uh, uh, it was about um, private schools and I, at the time I was teaching at one of those schools that were mentioned in the article and everything in that uh, newspaper article wasn't, not everything, but Lots of things were not correct. Uh, they were not. Uh, they were not uh, either good or bad. It was just that they more or less were describing how those schools worked and so on. And they mentioned lots of things that were not correct about the school where I was teaching and that I knew. So that led to me to distrust the article regarding all the other schools they mentioned there, because. How would I know if that was correct or not? <coughs> the same here with Shogun. The problem is that <coughs> <coughs> this is another massive book and I am still, I think, that 30% in the book. <coughs> but <coughs> it is a fun read. And I'm enjoying it. The problem is that I am I don't have the time to read all these enormous books at the same time. Because I'm not over. Then I am, as I have already mentioned here, reading the Dark Tower series by Stephen King. And I am currently on the fifth book which is called Wolves of the Color. And these books are gigantic as, as well. So, um, although I'm enjoying the book a lot, it was actually, the beginning was interesting and uh, a little bit different from what I was expecting because uh, it starts with uh, the setting and uh, the initial story. Uh, there are lots of, characters and people that uh, I didn't know from before because our main group of characters uh, hasn't appeared yet. Well, they I think that now, the last time I read, they finally appeared. But um, I am enjoying those books a lot. But I had to pause when I suddenly I saw myself reading Shogun uh, Don Quixote and the Magic Mountain and everything else. And I'm also 
uh, hosting a read-along of the Palaces series by Anthony Trollope. Again, another author that likes to write big books, which, in a way, it's not a coincidence, because the fact is that I do like those big books. I think that they 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 fill me in the detail about every character in the those tensions in those the plot some books again have more plot than others but everything is more we have space for all those things so i really like those uh, books but the problem is my me wanting to read everything at the same time so Phineas Finn is the second book. So I am reading, my plan was to read one book every two months. So I read uh, Can You Forgive Her? Which is the first book. I read it in January, February. And now I am reading Phineas Finn, which is the second book. Also, I, I started reading it, but then when in the beginning of March, but then with all, all those um, big books are paused and now I want to restart it again and then I'm also as you may remember uh, rereading this book uh, but this is again uh, a very um, slow reread <clears throat> which I'm enjoying because uh, this book is conveniently divided in 12 books and so I decided to read one book per month and uh, because the last time I read it uh, I was um, I, th I felt that I read it too quickly and uh, so I am now uh, starting the fourth part uh, and that's what I will read in the month of April um, <clears throat> and that's, I, I think that I might have forgotten something. Uh, of course, um, <clears throat> as I said previously, on the weekends I tend to try to uh, read different things. So, for example, uh, Una and Crypto at the Codex Cantina mentioned that <clears throat> they were going to read a short story by Somerset Mom, which is called The Luncheon, which actually they couldn't find in their collected stories they had. And I was even making fun of them because I do have, I have, this is the first volume uh, of collected short stories. Uh, there are four. I only have this one for now. I do want to get the others. And um, sure enough, it's the story number four of, um, sorry, this collected stories, The Luncheon, and I picked it up and read it, and when I read it, I noticed that I had read it, I had <clears throat> read it very recently, when I bought the book. I started reading some of these stories. <coughs> and this, The Luncheon, it, I think, <coughs> <coughs> it's very funny because when I was reading it, it it causes me some anxiety feelings which I share with the narrator of the story and the situation he is involved in. And I remember when I was reading now for the second this week, when I read it, uh, I remember having the same feelings the first time I read this. <coughs> and the situation he's describing is something that I think I shared some moments in my life just like those, okay? Uh, it's a, of course, it's more than this, but uh, the, the anxiety cause, cause, sorry, anxiety causing situation is that uh, he, uh, it's not sure he's, he's got the money to pay for something, in this case, a meal. And uh, he's seeing 
you know that uh, he has a guest and the guest is uh, eating several uh, expensive items from the menu and he's dreading uh, the idea of shall I ha uh, will I have um, enough money to pay this is the basic structure of the story of course there's more but uh, because we I loved it I liked it a lot uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to the discussion that uh, the Codex Cantina channel is going to do about this uh, also, um, Noah, at his channel, he's going to restart his Sundays with Borges, and um, I have uh, this book, which is Quentus Completus, so these are the all his stories in uh, Spanish, I actually want to get his poetry and his essays too but uh, <clears throat> uh, so let me see uh, Noah is they are going to start reading uh, El Informe de Brody I think that in English it's the um, yeah uh, Brody's report so these are the stories that belong to that book and I am going to try and um, read along with them. So I will uh, read and then watch their videos where they discuss the story. And I also got the audiobook of this. So I love doing this reading, especially those book, these books that <clears throat> are in, in this case, <clears throat> Spanish, which it's not... Uh, a language that I know much or that I know very well uh, so I I like to read and listen at the same time so I am going to try and um, read along with them so I, I think that they are going to do one story per week so it's, that it doesn't bother me and um, it's also kind of a, a, a relief from the big books, reading these short stories and other short stories. Also, uh, theater, as I said, I'm rereading all the Shakespeare stories. So Shakespeare plays uh, starting at um, in chronological order. So, uh, and I'm enjoying that a lot. Uh, the next one. I haven't read it yet, is um, Henry the Six Part Two. <clears throat> I'm going to read them chronologically. So, in publishing, uh, pu um, date of publishing orders. So, I'm starting in Part Two because I know that then there's Henry the Six Part One and then Henry the Six Part Three, but I'm starting in the part two because that's how it was published so uh, this is the cha chaotic situation I mean I am I decided that in April I'm going to finish Don Quixote and the Magic Mountain so that's where I'm going to concentrate the big books I'm going to concentrate on and then <clears throat> I'll move on to Shogun and the Wolves of Color oh and Phineas Finn of course and I want to, to finish Phineas Finn in April as well. Uh, I want uh, then Shogun and Wolves of the Color are moving, I'm going to continue them in May, which is still a heavy burden because in May I'm also going to read, and this is a book, my mom's book, uh, this is The Betrothed by. Alessandro Manzoni, which is um, <clears throat> an Italian classic, uh, and I'm going to buddy read it with Ursula from a channel which I don't know the name, but I will um, uh, write down in the description box, and uh, uh, Tom from Tom L.A. Books. So I think that this, this is, uh, after the Divine Comedy, this is the big 
a classic of uh, Italian literature. This is an historical fiction novel, um, which is uh, about, I think that uh, it is set, I don't know if it is the 16th or 17th century. But I am quite uh, curious about this. I have, I remember trying to start this when I was very young, when my mother got this book, because I knew it was a classic and I loved to read classics when I was a kid. I don't know why. Now I do love them too, but at the time I think it was a kind of a snob thing to look at me. I'm 12 and 13 and I do read the big works of literature. But anyway, so this is a read long for me. That's why I cannot read Dr. Gibago. As I also didn't have the time to read Idiot by Dostoevsky, uh, <clears throat> because uh, there was a, or it's now, uh, I saw the other day the film where Una was saying that uh, he, they were reading uh, the Idiot finally, uh, but I want to read it. I may eventually read it this year, but uh, I don't know when, and I'm not going to enter any other read-along while I'm, I'm dealing with these monsters here. Again, this is not <clears throat> a painful situation. The only thing is the, the overwhelming of reading everything at the same time, it's an overwhelming uh, sensation. And so I decided that now I'm going to forget read-alongs for some time and just concentrate on what I have in my hands that I want to uh, read at my own pace. Because, again, the problem is that, of course, I could be uh, either picking up audios, books, or something like that, and uh, read, 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 but then I wouldn't, I, w I would read and the words would fly away with, I, I like to read them and think about what I'm reading, so for that reason, again, uh, I'm already, uh, the, and the idea of books, all those books that I want to read, and then I, I watch films about people that are uh, doing lots of interesting tags and they mention lots of books and then I say, oh, I want to read that. I, I want to read that. I think that happens to everyone who watches uh, Booktube. The problem is that I like the great majority of genres. I like everything except for modern contemporary literary fiction, which I don't know, I don't have any patience for. Uh, not even chiclet or others. The only thing that I like more than fiction is science fiction, fantasy and um, mysteries. Historical fiction too. So again, I like a lot. Uh, and I, whenever I hear about something, I said, oh, is that good? Oh, I want to read it. Even yesterday, I was uh, asking someone on a Discord about Legend, which is um, the first book in the 11 book saga by David Jamel. It's a fantasy saga. And they say, oh, it's one of the my favorites. And I immediately got interested in that, as I am in many other huge uh, trilogies or series, because fantasy tend to have those huge books. Um, which I love. I love all those uh, worlds they create and the stories around them. And I have so many started series or series to start that you cannot imagine. Again, I'm already pushing books to 2024. So, because I 2023 is already heavy on books. The, but the main one for me my personal project will be Proust and A la recherche du temps perdu, which I'm going to read in French throughout the year. <clears throat> and that's all I 
safe today. I had lots of th more things to do and to say, but uh, I think that this is it's been a long video, and I wanted to do more frequent and shorter videos. But then I life intervenes, and I forget to record, and then. <coughs> This becomes too long. I'm going to stop here. Hopefully, I will find a nice uh, <coughs> <coughs> schedule for me to record at least one once a week. Uh, but until then, I'll stop here because my throat is already getting too dry. And I hope everyone has a nice... Easter uh, week and I'll see you next time.